Hi, my name's Joe. Welcome to my channel where I help you make better coffee and I give you honest reviews. Today, I have an amazing honest review that I can't wait to share with you. But before we go through that, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me a lot as I'm a small creator. And don't forget we're giving away a coffee or some type of item every month. The next month we're actually gonna give away a grinder and right now we're giving away Intelligentsia coffee. So click on the link above, watch that video, leave a comment and enter to win. Okay. So today we have the Terra Cafe. This thing is a monolith. It's very, uh, very pretty. I like the way it looks. It's super cool. But um, before we get too much into everything, I just want to let you know I'm going to structure this into about three segments, like I do a lot of the other reviews. So I'm going to do pros. I'm going to start with the pros. I'm going to go to cons. And then I'm going to give you a score and kind of make a couple of drinks and show you how that process goes. So we're going to start with the pros. The um, thing I really like about this machine is that it is, it's a super automatic, you know, like I've done other machines that are super automatic, such as the DeLonghi ESIM 3300 or the Philips 1200. But this thing is super, super automatic. I don't know how to explain it other than it's like really automatic. You hit a button, like you want a latte, you hit a button, this thing's going to Pull your shot, it's gonna put frothy milk in there, and it's gonna be you know, all done for you using this little carafe that you can get when you buy this machine. Um, so it is a really, it's, it's super, super cool that everything just happens all at one time. The next thing um, I wanna mention too that I like about this machine a lot is the heating tray. So this machine is mostly plastic, but if you take a look at the heating tray, it's actually a removable metal um, piece here where you could put your cups. And there's room for maybe, you know, three or four espresso cups or two, you know, cappuccino cups. But I will say what I really like about this is a lot of super automatic machines, this is plastic, or if it isn't, it doesn't heat up that much. This thing gets hot. I'm talking like, if I put my hand on here too long, I'm gonna burn it. like. Might have to go to the hospital. But anyways, <laughs> so the next thing I like about it is um, on here. So like I was saying, the the frother is um, is is integrated in here. When you hit you know whatever cup of coffee you want, whatever style of coffee you want, it'll automatically do everything for you. But the other thing I like is that they're all separated. So I, I have uh, some little clips here that you can see where the milk is separate. The hot water spout is separate and the shot of coffee spout is separated. So I like that everything's separated because, you know, if you want to pull just hot water, a lot of machines have a separate water thing, but it's like off to the side or something. But it's nice that everything's separated so you don't have, you know, if you want to have tea or something like that, or maybe you're making like an instant, you know, cocoa or something, it's not going to taste like old gross coffee. So that's a really nice function that I like. Uh, the, the next thing I really like is the uh, hot water. The, the fact that you can do, if you take a look in here, you have the option for hot water and you also have the option for milk. So, you know, if again, on most automate, on most machines in general, you have a, hot, a separate hot water spout and maybe a separate, um, you know, frothing spout. So it's nice that even though this thing is super, super automated, you still have the option to get just those two um, beverage items. Uh, the next thing I like about this machine a lot is the design. It's very monolithic, like I was saying. It's very long. It, it does measure in 18 inches, 17, roughly 17 to 18 inches uh, from here to, to the back. So it is big, so you got to have some counter space. But it is really nice looking. I like the chrome accent pieces. I like that they're not shying away from plastic. I've mentioned that before in previous videos. I, I just like it when you own up to plastic and you make it look good. Um, you know, there's no, there's no reason to go overboard with making it look all crazy and curvy. It's very, it's very modern looking. Uh, the other thing too, is that it does come in multiple colors, white and black. Uh, so you can make it match any, you know, setting that you have for your own, you know, setup at your home or coffee bar or whatever. But I will say if you go with white, it doesn't show smudges quite as much. I would imagine the black one would probably show smudges more, but because it's white, when you have coffee that hits the back of this tray, you may be able to see maybe a couple of spots there. But um, no matter what, every time you make a shot of espresso, you're gonna get at least some uh, you know, splattering and splashing on the back of this, and it looks not great. It kind of makes it look dirty. But, so you're always gonna be kind of going through there. 
But again, I really do like the design of it. I think it's uh, very well built and it looks it looks handsome. The other thing I want to note is I did talk to uh, the company. I called them on the phone and I kind of I had a couple of questions because if you look at this machine, a lot of the the design and everything, and even the screen looks a lot like a melee. And I will show a little picture of that melee, but it uh, it does seem to be kind of a, a homage to that in a way. But I did contact them, and they said they do not share any parts with melee, and that this is completely designed by them. So uh, the next thing down the pros list here is the um, the alert systems. So we have lots of clips we're going to show through this whole piece, but. Um, when you put in, if you like open the tray, it'll say you have a, a door open, the right door open. If you open the left door, you're gonna, and you take this water tank out, it'll say the water tank's out. You have uh, the cleaning notifications. You have notifications for basically everything in there, uh, whether your grinds are low or, you know, there's just plenty of them. I'm gonna show as many as I can in the video. Um, so I do like that it, it's, and, and the other thing too I like about it is it's not super complicated. It's not like TK107 error nine. It's like, dude, what does that mean? It's just, hey, you're cleaning, you, you need to clean the machine or, you know, your, your water tank isn't seated correctly. Um, so there's, you know, it, it's nice that it's very specific and it's not too complicated. Uh, next thing is, this is sort of a pro-ish, con-ish thing and we're kind of getting closer to the con levels, so you know, take it with it, you know how you see it. But the water tank in here is a 1.7 liter or 57 ounces of water tank. So it, it's a pretty good size. Generally 1.8 is the standard or maybe even two liters is the is more standard in, in the espresso world. But 1.7 is still pretty respectable and it's pretty big. Um, the other thing that I think a lot of people will like, I don't personally care about this much, but I have people ask me this all the time. What, like, what is the quietest grinder in, in this category of, of machines? Or, you know, can I get a machine that's a little quieter, different items like this? But I will say um, unequivocally, this is the quietest machine I have ever used. You hit espresso and it is, it's just very quiet. I don't know how they did it. I, they probably put in like a lot of uh, insulation and stuff like that, but it is impressively quiet. Uh, even when you're frothing milk, now it doesn't have like a standard steam wand, which might help. It all, it all goes through this little system here, but it is very quiet. So if you want a quiet machine, if you got a lot of people in your house and you're waking up at 4 a.m. and you're, you know, don't want to wake up your whole house, this is the machine for you. Uh, so that, that concludes the pros section. So I'm going to transition now to the cons. Hopefully um, they don't scare you away too much. I, I so far have been very impressed with the machine. So here's my nitty gritty getting into the cons. So the first thing is, I know that I said the grinder is very quiet, but I think the grinder could be a little bit more versatile. It doesn't let you go quite as fine as I would like it. Um, uh, if you've used other machines and this is all we're, we're tapped out here on this one we're tapped out at the one and you're not even close to getting um i think it lets you grind as much as like 12 12 grams of coffee that's what it says in here i don't know how well that is actually accurately determined but because i'm sure it's not weighing it but it says you're doing 12 grams of coffee and there's no way you're gonna get 12 grams of coffee out of here in 25 seconds it's not gonna happen it's just not and i've done lots of videos explaining the difference between pressurized and non-pressurized espresso. I'll leave that link above. Click that, I think you could learn a lot about it. Um, and it, you'll kind of learn whether this machine is for you or not actually in that video. This is using a pressurized system. All super automatic machines are using pressurized systems, so I'm not gonna go too far into that. But it's there's not too many machines in this category that will let you kind of actually get closer to a dialed in shot of espresso. So if that's something you really want to do, you really want to get into the nitty gritty and stuff like that of, of an espresso machine and, you know, learn how to pull the perfect shot, this probably isn't going to be for you because um, it's just, you're just not going to get a perfect shot of a quote unquote perfect shot of espresso. Next uh, on the, the downside is, I, and I don't know if this was just our machine or not. I don't know what was going on, um, 
But this this thing, and I I, I have clips for it, so I don't want to go too crazy uh, showing it here. But the I don't it just the the water tank wouldn't align. You you put it in. It said it was aligned when you clicked it in, but then when you would hit the espresso button or, or latte, it grind coffee, and then it would like try to push water through it, and it wouldn't, and it would come up, and it would say misaligned water tank. And I'm telling you, we tried doing this like four or five times, pulling it out, pushing it back in, pulling it out, and it just kept screwing up. So, and, and it kept happening back and forth. Once we got it to seat, it would work for a while and it, you, we'd get it good a couple times, but then I noticed that it just wasn't super perfect on that. We did get kind of more used to it. You gotta push, you kind of, I think I show it, you gotta push really hard under this, under the bottom center of it, so, or bottom left of it, I guess, to get it in. Um, so just make sure you notice that. If, if, you, if you have that come up, just try to go, push it in harder on that back left corner. Um, the next thing is the custom customizations. So on the menu uh, on here, you go to settings and it's nice. You have a lot of customizations. Again, like I said, right here, this bean is indicating how many grams of coffee it's going to pull or ounces. Uh, I don't trust that, um, uh, with my life at all. I, I personally don't, I don't think they're actually going to weigh out the grams in this machine it's probably just time sensitive so it's probably they've done the the research to try to determine whether or not this is you know 12 how much time it takes to get 12 ounces that kind of leads me though to to some things like on the on the temperature again this goes with super automatics like you don't have a lot of control and that's probably for the best but some of these some of these temperatures are bizarre like i don't know anybody that would pull a shot of espresso at 167 degrees that's very low um 194 is n more normal and then it jumps right to 203 i would really like to see the variation of like one nine like 195 even to 205 or maybe 190 uh all the way through 210 maybe i mean I, i'm i'm maybe nitpicking a little bit here but I think it would be nice to have more options, uh, like 194, 200, and then 205 or 204, because uh, you're gonna notice more nuances when you do that. Um, the other thing too is like in the cappuccino and the latte stuff. This and this is kind of two parts, but there's you know the steaming, the milk steaming. It doesn't really go off ounces; it just goes off th seconds of how much, like how long you want it to steam milk. So it's hard to determine how much you're actually going to get out of that. Um, again, I'm really nitpicking on this because, you know, this machine is actually pretty good at, you know, at what it does. But it, it is something to think about when you're, when you're going to customize your drinks. Um, with that said, the, uh, the manual froth setting to me is kind of odd too. And this is kind of a two-part. So when you're making a cappuccino, generally you want a... Um, a drier froth you want a nice like whipped froth on top whereas when you're doing a, a latte you kind of want to have more of a wet froth something that you know integrates more into the to the coffee on this when you click latte or cappuccino the only difference truly that it does is by default I should say too is that it gives you more time on the latte for milk I think it does 40 seconds versus 30 seconds. And uh, it does the milk first for lattes. To me, that doesn't make any sense because a latte has nothing to do with what order you put the milk in. Generally, you put the milk in after. So that's kind of bizarre to me. Uh, but I would say if you are gonna do a latte or you are gonna do a cappuccino, you're gonna wanna turn that uh, little knob and I'll show a little video of turning that, but um, you're gonna turn it like left, I think for drier or more wet and then right for more um, dry. So something to think about when you're making those lattes and cappuccinos is that you gotta do, you should probably turn those knobs when you're going to switch between the two. So that's the, uh, that's my pros and cons. Um, hopefully that helped you out a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna quickly pull a shot of espresso just for fun. You can kind of hear it a little bit, see how loud it truly is. I 
Another thing I, as far as design goes, that I kind of am not a big fan of is this this little pour spout here. I, I do like this that it's all separated, but this thing feels a little flimsy when you're pulling it up and down. You see how much give there is there? And I'm kind of pulling straight up and it's not really going straight up. So you gotta, you kind of gotta do it at the center or like grab both sides and push it up. You should be able to do it with one hand, but that's all right. Uh, just, it's just something to think about. Um, so that shot pulled in about 12 seconds. Again, it was 12 grams. That's really not what you want to shoot for, but it's hot. It came out nice. I think I might have changed that on accident to 203. No, I think I left it at 184. But it, it is a good shot of coffee. Um, again, it's a pressurized filter basket, so for what it is, it's pretty good. Uh, at the end here, we're going to give you a score. I'm going to give this machine an 8.5. And again, remember when I'm giving it an 8.5, that we are comparing this to other super automatic machines, not any espresso machine, because for me personally, and like I've explained this before, I don't wanna be stuck with just a pressurized filter basket. I like the option. I personally have a Barista Express, and I like to use you know, the non-pressurized filter basket, dial everything in, and kinda of get the nuances and everything of the espresso. Whereas, you know, this is, it's, it's a little bit limiting when you're getting into the finer, you know, nuances of, of making espresso and, and coffee and stuff like that. So realize we are just comparing that. Again, though, 8.5 is super good. I think this is a machine you should definitely consider. It runs at around um, $700, $750. Um, if you, when you get like this, this here, carafe, if you get it, and you get a couple of bags of coffee, I'll leave a link. Uh, you can get, I think, like 10% off or something like that if you use the link for this machine uh, that we have below. And then the other thing too is if you, Terra Cafe does offer a, a uh, refurbished model for around 600. So, you know, if you are trying to, you know, get that price down as much as you can, that's something to think about. Again, 8.5, I think it's a good machine. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.